Hey everybody, welcome to another video. I paid £325 and travelled 102 miles to pick up this bundle of PlayStations and PlayStation accessories. Some of it works, some of it's faulty, but hopefully we're going to fix it all and make some money. So in this bundle we've got a PlayStation 4, which is a PS4 original, 1TB. Comes with a controller, fully boxed and apparently fully working. We've got this white PlayStation 4 Pro, which apparently is fully working, comes with a black controller. The star of the show, a Star Wars limited edition PS4 Pro on firmware version 2.5. 2.5, but this has got an issue with the software. So we're going to try and fix this. This is fully boxed, limited edition. It's in fairly good condition, but that's not all I bought. I also got an extra two controllers and a boxed PlayStation VR with a bag of accessories. So we've got this weird thing here, which looks like um, something I might use in about 50 years to help me get up the stairs. Don't know what that actually is. It's an aim controller, apparently. We've got the motion sensors for the VR. We've got the two extra controllers and the one for, well actually one extra controller because we've got three PlayStations. Uh, so one extra controller, a controller for the other two PlayStations and the official Star Wars controller as well. There's also a few other things in here as well such as some cables, charging cables, the dock for the motion sensors and a few random crappy games. So without further ado, let's get into this. But if you are new to the channel and you like this type of content, I would really appreciate it if you hit subscribe and turn on the bell notifications. That way you don't miss any future videos. And if you want to support me, you can head over to Twitch and become a Twitch Prime subscriber by linking an Amazon Prime account and then subscribing absolutely free. It doesn't cost anything to do, but it does massively help me out. All right, so as I said, I paid £325 for this bundle, and in my opinion, that's an absolute bargain. Apparently, this works and turns on. I have seen it turn on, but I haven't seen it fully working, connected to the internet and things like that. So let's just make sure that it actually does work fully and that it's not banned or anything. I can actually hear the fan spinning up, so this might need a good clean. If the fan's spinning up that early, or rather that quick, that early, then it probably needs a service. I can hear that fan ramping up. Okay, there we go. That is displaying in 4K, so that's working absolutely fine. So let's just make sure that it syncs a controller. This is one of the controllers that it comes with. It does, and it works wirelessly as well. Okay, it does need charging though. Let's just make sure it connects to my network. Yes, it does. And that's running on system 9.60, so that one's actually been updated. Okay, let's test the game. Astrobot. So that's working. So that's just got to install, but it does appear as though the disk drive is working. So rather than waiting for that to install, the game itself is in fairly decent condition. A little bit of dust on it, but no scratches. So just for the sake of the video, I'll test it with FIFA 16. And that's loading the game, which means that it should be working. I think I do need to service this. It the fan ramped up fairly quickly when I first turned it on, so I think it might need cleaning. Uh, okay, my disc is definitely damaged. So this disc is 100% damaged. It is a test disc after all. But the disc drive does appear to be working and the disc drive controller chip as well is allowing the game to be loaded. So not worried about that, but I am going to give this console a clean. I'll shut the console down. And one thing I've noticed about this controller is the buttons are a little bit loose. So this one, this one feels okay, but this one is really loose. This one's a bit loose, and this one's a bit loose as well. But that one's... Actually, no, that one's loose as well. 
So yeah, I think these, they might need replacement membranes. The analogs themselves feel fine. But we might need some replacement membranes. Unfortunately, I don't have any, so I'll have to fix them for a second video or something when I get some replacement parts. So, yep, it's fairly dusty. So I'll take it all apart, give it a good clean, and then put some fresh thermal paste on, and it should be good to go. So this has actually still got the factory warranty sticker on it. So let's void that. So yep, even the hard drive is covered in dust. So all I'll do is just brush things down as I go along, just using a normal paintbrush. Very dusty inside. Boom. Oh, I need to get this off the desk and just brush it down. Ah, that's a bit better. There we go. Beautiful. And there's the board. Looks like it's never, ever had replacement thermal paste. So we'll fix that once we've cleaned the rest of the housing out. And yep, just as I thought, the vents and the heatsink are blocked up pretty badly. Or at least it was. Same with the fan. At the click of my fingers, it's going to be clean. And boom, just like that, we've got a clean fan and a clean housing. Magic. So, now that the console and all of the parts have been cleaned, it's time to replace the thermal paste on this. So we'll remove the old stuff. And put on a nice healthy dose. Not quite the perfect amount because we're not Tronix Fix here, so we're not quite going to put the perfect amount on, but we'll get pretty close. Beautiful. Um, pretty much all that's left to do now is just to put these 641,342.5 screws back in and then put the power supply in, put the case back on and we're good to go. Hopefully. And the finishing touch. There we go, beautiful. So I'm gonna make sure this still turns on, and make sure it still displays. And I also need to log into a PSN account to make sure that it's not banned. And then hopefully we can call this good to resell. It still turns on. Controller is still synced up. Well, it might help if I plug it into the right HDMI cable. And work. Magic. Okay, that seems to be working absolutely fine. So the final thing to do on this, just to make sure, is just to sign into a PSN account. So I'll do that and then we'll check and make sure that it actually logs in and it isn't banned. So I've just created a brand new account because I can't remember my details. There was nothing important on there anyway, so that's not a problem. But it seems to be going through and it seems to be letting me create a PlayStation Network profile, which means that this shouldn't be banned off PSN, which is great news. That means that this console is now ready to go. 
and I can make some money on it. So I should be able to sell this one roughly around about 150 to 170 pound with a controller. I do of course need to just sort the buttons out and stuff on the controller, but other than that, this one is ready to go. And first one down, first one won. Hopefully I can get it sold. So console number two is gonna be this original PlayStation 4. This is the one terabyte standard edition. And again, it's boxed with a controller. So I should, if I can fix this, or as long as it works, I should be able to get around about £125 for this one. So let's get this on the bench, and we'll see what's going on with it. So it does come boxed. The box isn't in the greatest of conditions, but it's still boxed nonetheless, so it will be sold as such. It's a little bit big to unbox on the desk, to be honest. I'm working with very limited space. Beautiful. So we've got a HDMI cable. That'll go with it. We've got a power cable. And the seller, when I got there, I think this goes to the VR. So... The seller forgot to put it in the VR box, so he put it into this box, save opening it all back up. So that was just in there extra. But we've got a brand new cable, brand new HDMI lead. They'll go with it, along with one of the controllers as well. Let's just get to the console itself. And as you can see, a couple of scratches, but overall, it's in fairly decent condition. So let's pair with this one on and see what's going on with this one. Okay, so it turns on. No disc in there. Does it go to the dashboard? We get a PlayStation logo. And it appears to work. Awesome. So everything is pretty much as described so far. So let's sync a controller. And that syncs. It's been factory reset again. I'm hoping this hasn't been updated, but I think it probably has. Version 9.0. That is exploitable. So this is going to stay on version 9.0 and sold as a low firmware console. I believe you can do a hell of a lot more on a 9.0 than you can do on something like a 6.72. So that's absolutely fantastic. That means that we can, yeah, we can, we can actually sell this as an exploitable console. So I'm not going to be updating this to the latest firmware. Um, I'll leave it on 9.0. So let's use my normal test disc, FIFA 16. Fantastic, that installed. And uh, it looks like it plays as well. Awesome. So my game, it's, not, it's probably not going to load. It's probably going to crash again like the last console. It's not really a test game for actually playing. It's a test game just to make sure the disk drive works. So, yeah. Kind of expected that, but it does appear to be working. It allows it to boot, which means that, the again, the drive controller I see appears to be working. Let's connect it to the internet. And it successfully connects to the internet. Fantastic. Okay. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to system and I'm going to disable the updates. We don't want to update this console. And then I'm going to sign into PlayStation Network. Uh, or maybe not, because it needs updating. So, I don't think this will be banned. I doubt very much it's going to be banned. The last one wasn't and the seller seems to be honest. He actually let me into his house. Uh, I actually travelled to his house to get the consoles, so I think if it was banned he would have told me, but I'm not going to update this just to make sure that it's not banned, it's just unfortunately a risk I'm going to have to take, but I'm going to trust that it's not banned, I think, I think that's probably the best thing to do, just trust it's not banned and basically hope for the best, I think. So everything appears to be working on that one, and uh, yeah, I'm happy. So, just like the last one, it's still got the warranty sticker on, so I think I'm going to give it a service and put some fresh thermal paste on it, just so as when the new 
new user, the customer who buys it, when they actually buy it, they're not going to have any overheating issues or anything like that for at least 18 months, I would say. So that's shut down, so we can get it apart and give it a good service. So again, warranty stickers, they're intact. In fact, they might be... They might be fake stickers. Didn't really remove much of that warranty void thing, so they might be aftermarket stickers. They seem to come off a little bit too easy. But then again, this one's not, so I'm wondering if they've just had the... Oh, actually, yeah, it is, okay. Yeah, I think these are fake. I think these are aftermarket stickers, which is fine. I mean, I don't mind that. Whoops, that was the wrong way. No, don't lose them black screws. I haven't got many of them. Wow. <laughs> Just like the last one, it's absolutely filthy. All right, I guess this is going to need a deep clean as well. That's fine. I'm glad I opened it up now. All right, that's enough to be able to at least open it up without it completely ruining my desk. Nope, that's not going to come off by popping it that way. It's going to have to be the good old-fashioned violent way. Just like this. Ow. Get your fingers every single time. But it doesn't break it. Apologies for the dipping audio. Didn't have the mic on because I didn't want to deafen everyone. So I just need to brush this off a little bit. What I tend to do is when I'm cleaning the console, I tend to use the base as a kind of drip tray sort of thing. Just brush it all into there and then I can get rid of it afterwards. That is a lot of dust. There's a lot of dust gathering up in there so far. And yep, as I suspected, it caked in dust. And as I suspected again, it has been opened before. So the way that I know that, it doesn't have a factory HDMI port. The factory HDMI port, you could see the pins sticking out the back. This has got what's called a V2 port on it. So this has definitely been opened by someone before, at least for a prior HDMI repair attempt. How long ago that was, I don't have any idea, but it does look like they cleaned it up pretty well. So kudos to whoever done that. We're gonna brush this down. And drop the brush, of course. Half of the thermal pads are missing. Or not, they're on the other side. I'm an idiot. Ignore what I just said. Alright, let's pop the board to one side. And we'll get the rest of the console torn down. Ready? Well, that's not that bad in terms of the heatsink. It's still getting half the cooling. But that fan, though. That fan, though. Wow. All right, let's collect this dust up. There's way too much there. One thing I will say is you do want to be careful with these, especially when you're brushing the other side. Because on the other side, you've got some springs around here, and they're very close to the APU. And a lot of the time, what people do is they'll brush the console down, and they'll bend these springs, and they'll accidentally short on something, causing a blue light of death. So be very careful if you're using a paintbrush or something like that for these. That's a lot of dust gathering up inside there. 
All right, that's pretty much clean. No, I didn't drop it. Hmm. We got a dead moth. Lovely. Almost there now. That is an awful lot inside that fan. Alright, I think that's probably as clean as I'm getting that without ultrasonic cleaning it. Or well, I think we can all agree it's a million times better. Apart from that little bit, and that little bit, and that little bit. <sighs> I'm going to stop being picky. That's what I'm going to do. That is absolutely disgusting. And that is how much dust we've collected from this console alone. I think it's safe to say that was needed. Just puts it into perspective, doesn't it? Alright. I'm going to get rid of that. Just look at that. You can literally see a clean spot where the console went. And now you can actually see the bottom of that one. I'll clean the rest of it later. Or rather the rest of the desk, not the rest of the console. For now, let's just get this back together. And I'll clean the thermal paste off here as well. That is very dry paste. I'm honestly surprised that this console even booted to the dashboard before overheating. It was an incredible amount of dust. Let's put some more thermal paste on. And drop the old thermal paste on the housing that we've just sat there cleaning. Well, we, I mean me, you've just sat there watching. But <laughs> never mind. It's fine. There we go. Okay, that's not completely lined up. That's better. Just slightly loosen all of the screws off. Not too much dust in that part. And now none. So two things you might notice here, number one, I'm not going to be opening up the disk drive because I don't believe it needs doing. When I inserted a disk it was absolutely fine, he didn't struggle to take the disk at all so I'm not going to bother doing that, I don't think it's necessary. And number two, I never open power supplies to clean them because it's dangerous. So that won't get cleaned internally, I will brush it down, I'll get rid of this bit of dust here but other than that, that's as far as I'll go with the power supply. So literally, that is as clean as that power supply is going to get from me. It's just not worth risking injuring myself or potentially even worse. And that is one beautiful looking console. And we're done. Screws are all back in. Console's been cleaned, fresh thermal paste. I'll just make sure that it does still turn on and boot to the dashboard, and then it's on to the feature console. Just make sure it still takes a disc, even though it should. Shouldn't be any reason why it wouldn't. 
and that's exactly what I meant by it was nice and smooth, didn't have any trouble at all taking a disc in, so I was happy to leave the disc drive and not risk damaging the laser by taking it apart. It might help if I plug the HDMI in. There we go. Happy days. I'm happy to call this one done and uh, should be able to get around about 120, 130 pound for that box in the condition that it's in. So really, really happy with that one once again, even though I'm now covered in dust and so is the workshop. Okay, so console number two, fully working or at least appears to be. I will give it an extended test before I end up listing it on eBay, but console number two is done. On to the star of the show, the 2.5 firmware limited edition console. And just like that, we've got the Star Wars Battlefront 2 limited edition 1 terabyte console. It's boxed and apparently this is running on firmware version 2.50 or something around that mark. So yeah, this is going to be a pretty valuable console considering the firmware version. Apparently this has got an update issue, so I'm not really sure why, because as far as I know, the disk drive checks didn't come in until around about firmware version 4, so I'm not sure what the update issue could be, but let's get it on the bench and we'll see what's going on with it. So again, the box isn't in fantastic condition, but again, it's boxed, it's still boxed and someone's still going to want this as a collector's piece. So. This is a very early firmware. I haven't actually looked at this yet, other than took it out of the box to make sure it was actually the, the PS4 that was being advertised. So there's the console, just off to the side there. Let's just see what accessories this has got, if any. How do you get inside this? I think it's just got the power cable there. So, yep, original power cable. I don't think there's a HDMI cable in there. It doesn't look like it. But that's fine, I can put a HDMI cable with it, not a problem at all. So, again, a few scratches, I mean, the finish on these cases, you generally can't help scratches and things like that, but, you know, it's in decent condition, it is a Star Wars limited edition. If someone was really that fussy, they could just buy a new plate for it, but me personally, I wouldn't mind in this condition. This one has been opened, and according to the person I bought this off, they said that the console stopped working literally days after it ran out of warranty, and they took it to another shop who said they couldn't fix it. So, not really sure what to think about this one. I'm hoping I don't end up having to sacrifice the white PS4 in order to get this one fully up and running. But let's just see what actually happened. Well, first I'm forgetting to plug HDMI cables in, and then I'm forgetting to plug power cables in. Huh. No sign of life from this, because my plug's not turned on. Of course it's not. There we go. All right, we get the blue light. Let's turn over to the TV and see what's happening. Got me panicking for a minute there. Thought it was not turning on. Okay, so it's stuck in safe mode. Okay, so it's saying initialize PS4 reinstall system software. That's not 2.0 or 2.5, that's 6.0. Someone's tried to update it. So either the seller's got it wrong or someone's tried to update it. That sucks, but it's still on 6.00. So does it really matter? So that could be why we're getting an issue with the disk drive. Doesn't really matter. But that being said, we need to get this, this one updated just so we can see the error code. So if we go to darksoftware.xyz, I can log in and then I can go to PS4, firmware list, scroll down to the recovery firmwares on the right hand side and grab firmware version 6.00. .00. 
979 megabytes. So I've got a USB here and it's got the PS4 folders on it. So I need to delete the update file that's on here. And then drag this one over. So it needs to go into a folder called PS4 and then update. And that also has to be capitalized as well. And then I can change the name of that to ps4update.pup and that's ready to go into the console. And of course, I always forget that these don't fit in PS4 Pros. Or at least not in the front anyway. The good news is the PS4 Pro has a USB port on the back. So let's press OK. And let's see what happens when I try and update it using the USB. Okay, that's taking an awful long time, to be honest. This could be something simple like a hard drive fault, because right now it's just hanging on this screen. If this was a disk drive fault, normally it would have evered out by now. So I guess we just need to wait and just see if anything happens. Right, so this has been hanging for around about five minutes now and it's just not doing anything whatsoever. I'm getting no error code, I'm getting no kind of inclination that it's even doing anything or even attempting to update. So I think I'm going to shut it down and I'm going to check with another hard drive and see if that works. And of course it won't let me shut it down. One thing I could do quickly is just check and see if it takes a disk in. And it does not. It does not take a disk. So yeah, a hard drive, putting a hard drive in at the minute is absolutely pointless because it's not taking a disk. Unless the disk drive has been left unplugged because someone has already attempted to repair this. What's someone done here? That's got some sort of glue or something on it, so I think that connector's knackered. So I think it's best to just get this apart. And yep, someone has replaced the thermal paste, but they didn't remove the old stuff. That's rather annoying. All right, I can clean the rest of it later on, but first of all, I'm going to pop under the microscope and just inspect a few areas just to check and make sure that the disk drive circuit is actually okay. So it's looking like we've got what appears to be flux, I would say. It does look like these components have been heated up. I'm hoping this is flux because otherwise it might mean we've got liquid damage. Oh dear lord. One of the done to you. It looks like someone's replaced the BD7764MUV, which is the Blu-ray drive motor controller. And it looks like the fuses have been replaced as well. So let's just test those fuses real quick. So I've got my multimeter set into continuity mode. That's the mode that's going to beep when I complete a circuit, and I'm gonna test from one side of the fuse to the other. I can do that with these pads. That's good. And that's good as well. That's good. Someone's definitely done some work around here though, and I don't like the look of it. I'm gonna remove this and replace it. So let's heat this up, let's remove this chip because I just don't like the look of this. It doesn't look like a great soldering job at all, to be honest. So I'll set my hot air at 440 degrees Celsius at 40% airflow. And this is that flux I was talking about, it just helps solder to flow. So the only reason I'm replacing this is because I didn't like the look of those solder joints and for all I know that could have put a faulty chip on so I may as well change it. 
One thing I always say to people is never to trust another technician's work. For example, if I was to send a console to another repair shop, I would expect them to check over my work and at least inspect it, no matter how experienced I am. And now what I'll do is just heat up the area until you'll see the solder flow and then I'll drop the chip down. I want to minimise the risk of heat damage. And I'll align that with surface tension. Press down on the chip. Wait for that solder to solidify, just like that. And a little bit of solder squeezing out is perfectly normal. And just run the iron over the pads. I use a bevel tip for this because it allows me to get flush with the chip. And that looks beautiful. So I'll just clean up and I'll make sure that I clean the connector as well. Okay, so that's nice and clean. And those solder joints look amazing. Beautiful. Alright, so really quickly, I'm just going to get some diode readings around this chip. So with my red probe on ground in diode mode. And shut up multimeter. Let's turn that beeper off. We don't need that. And we get 0 0.125, 0 0.64. Whoops, you can't even see. It's going to be a little bit out of focus as I move around the board. We get 0 0.64, 0 0.64, 65, 0 0.63, 0 0.64. That's. That's ground on one side, but that looks like a resistor. Hmm. So we've got ground on one side going into the chip. On this side, we've got 0 0.64 volts in diode mode. And then 0 0.12 coming out of it. I'm not sure if that's right. I'm going to grab a donor board and check. And yep, we do get diode mode reading as ground there, 0 0.66, 0 0.65, 0 0.37, that is different, 0 0.37 volts in diode mode there, on the board that I'm working on. We've got 0 0.12. All right, so let's see if I can figure out where this goes. So it's right on the edge here. It goes to this cap from what I can tell. So let's move the IPI out of the way a second. And yeah, it does go to that cap. And I think it might go from there to Renesas, to be honest. So let's just verify, first of all, that it goes to that cap. That resistor's just come off. Why? Okay, that's a bit strange. The actual resistor, just by probing it, has just come off the board. That's a little bit odd. It's not meant to. So, I actually recently had a component which did that on, I believe it was, I think it was a MacBook. And it turned out that the component had failed. Sorry, it was on a PS5, my apologies. And the component had failed. Let me just pop back into diode mode a second. I'm going to... Whoops. No, we're still getting 0 0.13. I wonder if we'd still get 0 0.13 once it's got a component on there. The actual component itself can cause... Or rather, once it's back in place, can can change the readings. Let's just replace that component just in case that's faulty. Now 
0.13 still. Yeah. Okay, we've definitely got an issue in this area then. Right, uh, so, yeah. I'm really not sure with this. I need to find this where this goes, but I just don't know where. The problem is I keep accidentally touching ground points and things. I think I might have to inject some voltage. I think I might have to inject some voltage, to be honest, because it's probably going to take me far too long to backtrace that line. So, yeah. I'm going to go for a 1 volt injection and just basically see if I can pick anything up from that. Okay, and right now I am injecting voltage and it's not picking up anything at all at one volt absolutely nothing no current draw at all at 2.8 volts i'm picking up 0.005 amps i'm actually climbing up to 8.5 volts i think this is a 12 volt line and now i'm drawing 160 milliamps i'll go to overhead I don't think 260 milliamps is going to be enough to show me any kind of heat signature, to be honest. Now I'm drawing half an amp at 9 volts. And there we have a bit of heat. Okay, I found something. I do not know what this is. I don't have a clue what this chip is, but... I was detecting heat around here. What's that? A bit of fluff. All I do know is that this is not a component which is married to the board. This can be replaced. Some of these don't look great, these components around here. But injecting voltage, and this area gets hot eventually. So, that's telling me that there's some sort of a short not a major short not a direct short but there's some sort of a short here all right so i'm going to convert to a normal probe for a second and just make a hundred percent sure it was whoops there where i was getting current draw hmm Have I just blown the fuse? Wow. Okay, something just got real hot around here. Yeah, that MOSFET's damaged. Let's just remove that, because it could lead back to there. That could literally be where it leads back to, and then injecting voltage, maybe it's just thought I've had enough. We're about to find out, because I'm going to change that. And then if this still doesn't change my diode reading to a normal... Damn it, screw. Where's that screw from? Screw you. If it still doesn't change the diode reading, or if I get it back at 0.13, then I think it's give up time. But I do think we're on the right track with the specific circuit, which seems to have failed. Maybe this MOSFET here has just thought, yeah, I'm not taking it no more. I've been putting up with this crap for too long. And just give up. Okay, I'll grab one of those off a donor board. I believe they're all the same on all of these donors. Let's just get rid of that excess bit of solder and then I can straighten this out. 
Oh god, damn it. I guess I should put some flux down. It's getting late and I'm getting tired. Alright, so that's replaced. So now let's have a nose and see, shall we? So that one small resistor goes to this cap. So now I'll see what my diode reading is and hope that we get a reading of around about 0.5. And I'll tell you what I can do. I can even put it on the screen. So in the top left hand corner, you'll see my multimeter. And I was getting 0 0.13. We're supposed to be expecting around about 0 0.56. What do we get now? Well, nothing because I keep slipping. Apparently it's still short. It's a bit blurred, but apparently it's still short. Well, that's rather annoying. And that's really annoying. I think it's give up time on this one. Unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to be able to figure it out. And I think this is nothing more than a donor board. So, what I will do off camera, because this video is going on for a little bit too long, to be honest. What I will do, though, is I will take the board out of the white one, which is just behind me. And I'll put it into the Star Wars Limited Edition one, because that one is worth more. Now, unfortunately, it's not going to be exploitable, but... It, at least it's a working console and it'll have the Star Wars Limited Edition case on it. So, yeah, unfortunately, got to cut my losses on this. I won't completely lose out because I will still be able to sell the parts as well as salvage some of the bits off this one. So, for example, the HDMI encoder, the safe bit should be good. Um, you know, you've got many different components on the board which I can salvage for parts. And on top of that, I've got the disk drive off it, I've got the power supply, I've got the case, the fan, uh, the heatsink. So, yeah, not going to completely lose out on that one. Uh, we do still have the PlayStation VR. I have seen that working, so, yeah, I'm sure you can take my word for it that it's going to be working. It's a little bit too much to set up in the workshop. I'm working with really, really limited space, so... I'm going to get that sold, but overall, the total profit for this should still be a profit. I should be able to get around about £60 for the power supply. I should be able to get around about £40 for the disk drive. Uh, the case, cases are difficult to sell, maybe £20, £25, so around about £120 for the parts. The donor board, I would probably value it around about £40 because of the HDMI encoder and Southbridge. So... Yeah, one hundred and fifty, hundred and sixty pound in parts of that console. The white one, like I said, I'm going to transfer the um, the board over to the Star Wars case. But you know, uh, it is what it is. I should get around about two hundred and fifty pound for that limited edition for the Star Wars one. So around about four hundred pounds. So that's more than my money back straight away. And then I've still got another PlayStation Four and a complete VR. So about £120 for the PlayStation 4 and then the PlayStation 4, the PlayStation VR for the entire kit goes for £200. So I should be about £300 in profit even without getting this board working. So, yeah, um, oh, I forgot the hard drive. I've got a hard drive as well, so £310. <laughs> but, yeah. I'm going to leave it there for the video. I've managed to get two of them working just by servicing them. Unfortunately, this one I can't fix, or at least I don't think I can fix it. But uh, it is what it is, I suppose. I could potentially, if, if it is that arm chip, or if it is the APU or something, then I could potentially use that for an APU swap board. I know it does turn on, so I could use it for data recovery and things like that. But, yeah, it's probably not worth it. But, you know, I'm happy either way. I've still got a good bargain. I'm going to leave it there. Thank you very much for watching. If you do have any comments or questions, leave them down in the comment section down below. I'll always do my best to answer. If you do want to organise a repair, consolefix.co.uk forward slash book dash your dash repair. That'll take you straight to the repair. I'll leave a link in the video description. 
where you can book in a repair as well. And also, if you want to support me, head over to Twitch, become a Twitch Prime subscriber, and that way you can subscribe me for free. subscribe to me for free, and it massively helps me out, but it doesn't cost you a penny. But other than that, thank you very much for watching, and until next time, see you later. Bye for now.